In this video, you're going to discover how to use conversation as a way to holistically protect your kids and teens online. And remember to stick around to the end because we're not going to just talk about just talk to your kids. We're going to go a little bit deeper than that. So stick around until the end for that. Before we go too deep into this pot, let's agree on one thing words matter how you say it to yourself matters how you think about it to yourself and then how you relate it to your kids matter but i also want to get one thing out of the way i'm an award-winning fourth 30 under 30 online safety educator i am not a parenting expert nor my therapist nor my psychiatrist nor my counselor okay so there are things that are going to be beyond my scope and i will let you know i'm going to most likely mention it multiple times to see a therapist to see a counselor to see someone who can help your family communicate better if you're having a lot of problems with your teens or your kids to communicate. But I will give you certain things to think about as it relates to your journey in protecting your kids online so that you can start that conversation, so that you can start that safe space in your household to build what you need in order to protect your kids online. When it comes to a conversation, especially as kids get older, it's less about the conversation and exactly what you're saying at any given moment, but also how you're listening to your kid and your teen, and most especially when talk about teens today than it is in anything else. Talking to them really is a lot of just listening and being there and providing a non-judgmental, non-nitpicky, non-naggy space for them to just be human and just relay who they are to you so they can feel safe within their household and ultimately outside in the big bad world. This means that one of the most important things that you can do within any conversation, whether it's a small interaction or a big interaction, is giving them a voice to speak and to relay what they need to relay. If they believe that they have a voice with you, then it's easier for them to understand how to have a voice within themselves and with other people. And one of the best things you can do for your teens is giving them the choice of saying no, giving them options, allowing them to have autonomy over their lives and allowing them to have boundaries for themselves so that they can understand what it means to have boundaries outside of the household as well. If the entire conversation is, I said this, it's this way, it's my way or the highway, it's obedience, obedience, obedience. When it comes time for them to set boundaries with other people, or not obey someone outside of the household, they don't understand how that goes and they're more likely to get themselves into situations that are really, really dangerous. For many cultures and many households, it seems quite advantageous to raise kids in a way that is all about obedience and all about my way or the highway. However, it does not work that way because once they leave the household, they don't know anything else. So either they're a kid in the candy shop or they follow whatever the biggest person in the room says. And you want your kids to have that critical thinking, to navigate situations in a way that's safe, secure, and sane, and you do not want them to get into a situation that is extremely detrimental to their own health, whether it's well-being of their mental, physical or emotional health. One of the biggest problems about the online world is teens or young people talking to strangers. And one of the things that we always talk about is them having boundaries or knowing when someone is preying on them, or when, knowing when something's predatory or grooming behavior. If they're able to have a voice within your household, they're able to have a connection with you, they're more likely to be able to see those situations for what it is and get out of those situations quicker than someone who's used to obeying or just following the rules or a kid in the candy shop. So you want your kid to have a balanced point of view when interacting with other people online. One thing that is common in the online space, online safety space, is talking about all the dangers and crazy things that happens to kids online. While I agree that we need to have those type of conversations, you do have to be mindful about not every interaction about the online world or tech is doom and gloom with your kids because you're alienating them from their experiences and they're gonna be unable to connect with you because they believe that if I tell my parents or my caretakers about this awesome situation I had online, they're not gonna see it the same way and they're gonna just be like, oh, they're weird, or, oh, they're this and that, and that's gonna further alienate them from you and not allow you to connect with them, which is one of the biggest foundations of protecting your kids online, if not honestly the foundation. So if you're not already, I want you to acknowledge some positive side of the internet or tech or whatever it is that your kid is also really interested in. This allows you to make room for some awesome positive experiences and allows you to create a better connection with your kids. The reason why I said normalize talking to your kids or talking to your teens is because as technology grows and it gets more complex, there's no way that you're going to know all of the tech things to do and all the security things to do and all the safety things to do. The best way to holistically protect your kids online is having these conversations and normalizing it. 
If you're having trouble with these type of conversations or it's really difficult or you're having a really strained relationship, as I said in the beginning of the video, you really want to go and seek help, whether that's a therapist or a counselor or whatever helps you and your family communicate better because this is a differentiator between teens that are able to do well and teens that are not. Now, this doesn't mean that if you're not communicating, it's doom and gloom and all is wrong with your teen. They can also heal and go on their healing journey by themselves. So even if you're unable to connect with them for whatever reason, encouraging them and consistently talking about therapy and being open about you doing therapy yourself can give them the seeds that they need to start doing therapy on their own. So it's not lost if you're unable to have that awesome, great connection. Not everyone can have that, but you can encourage them to start healing by themselves and going on that healing journey because them being a healed teen and a healed young adult will help them tremendously as they go through life. The reason why this matters so much is because there's a lot of focus on control and not a lot of focus on connecting with your kids. And so a lot of teens are feeling distrust with their parents and they're, they're, they're running away, they're hiding things, they're becoming more secretive, and that's the last thing that you want teens to do. I'm not saying that do not do the methods that works best for your family because it works best for your family. You know your situation. By the way, you are an expert in your kids, no one else is. So I can say something, a therapist can say something, but at the end of the day, you know what's in your household and you have to take the bit, you have to take the good like you take the meat and you throw out the bones right so each family is completely different my main goal is for everyone to not rely on the parental controls and rely on the parental monitoring use them as tools in addition to whatever you're using to connect with your kids and to make sure they're safe and secure but never ever 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 use that as a foundation of protecting your kids online and relying on that so much that you're losing the connection with yourself and you're losing the connection with your kids and you're using your trauma and your triggers as a way to to connect and control with your kids. You do not want to do that. You want to make sure your kids are growing up to be fully functioning adults who are able to also protect themselves. Because not only, we're not talking about kids anymore, when they get into the teen years, they're young adults. Are they full-fledged adults? No. Are they kids? No. They're in that like little middle confusing years and it's difficult. They still need you, but they don't need you the way that they were when they're younger kids. This also means that your security and safety plan is not just what you're doing for them, but what you're doing with them and what they're doing with themselves. So not only do you have to teach them security and safety, but they need to know security and safety themselves. Sometimes you may not know security and safety, so someone like me comes in and I can teach them security and safety and help them understand how to integrate it in their lives as they're moving forward. Because now they're getting into their young adult years where they're gonna start having more control over their online presence and their online accounts, and they're gonna need to know how to secure that so that predators and hackers are not taking over their accounts. They need to know how to use a password manager, what is two-factor authentication, what is privacy, how do they operate online? How do they protect their own privacy and everyone around them? So these are the years that you're teaching them how to understand security and safety as it pertains to their own life. One of the biggest things we often miss when it comes to connecting with teens and navigating a conversation and normalizing talking to teens and having open, non-judgmental conversation is actually healing yourself. A lot of the block in connecting with your teen or connecting with that, that type of conversation is because we are unhealed within ourselves. We have our own wounds, our own triggers, our own unhealed inner child. And so focusing on healing yourself and giving yourself that freedom that you need internally to believe that you are enough, to believe that you're connected, to believe that you are worthy, to have an understanding of connection between you and yourself and your inner child is monumental to connecting with your teens. If this video was valuable, then pop the like button to let other parents know that they need to be watching this video as well. In my next video coming up in a couple seconds, I have a video on how to protect your teens from being destroyed by social media. If you have not watched that video yet, I highly suggest you watch it right now.